Every team in the NFL has a philosophy regarding how they want their roster constructed, but maybe none so more obvious than San Francisco. They routinely invest heavily on their defensive line, and this free agency period is no different. They just brought in Leonard Floyd to a two-year deal worth $20 million. Floyd is probably in the back half of his career, but last year, he was able to match a career high in sacks of 10.5 with the Buffalo Bills. So in this video, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into his performance last year, as well as his career up to this point, to really understand who Leonard Floyd is currently, as well as what San Francisco can get out of him for the next two years. When looking at Floyd, the first thing that pops out is how athletic he is. He comes in at 6'6", wing. 240 pounds, but somehow he runs his 40 yard dash in 4.6 seconds and his 10 yard split in 1.6 seconds. Some players test a little bit better than they play, but with Floyd, this isn't the case. You'll routinely see him blowing past tackles on the line of scrimmage. So now entering San Francisco's wide nine system, I think this is a perfect fit. When you're looking at what San Francisco's defensive line coach Chris Kasarik asks out of his players, it's not to think too much, not to drop into coverage, but more so to utilize their athleticism to get after opposing team's quarterbacks. And while some teams only have one or two starters that can get to the quarterback, San Francisco has at least three on their defensive line in Bosa, Hargrave, and now Floyd that can absolutely wreak havoc on a game. And to go over how Leonard Floyd wrecks havoc for opposing team's quarterbacks, I want to go over his most recent year, starting out with his two and a half sack performance against the Jets. While so far I've been focusing on how athletic of player Leonard Floyd is, the fact is he's an extremely fun fundamentally sound player as well. When you're watching this play, the first thing that might pop out is how quick he is. But under further inspection, he's putting on a defensive line clinic as well. As soon as the tackle reaches out to engage in him, he uses his length and hands to fight off this and then get the sack on Zach Wilson. This is exactly how defensive line coaches teach it. To further highlight my point of how smart and athletic Leonard Floyd is, I want to take this stunt for example. He shoots outside as quickly as he can, which causes the guard and center to turn their shoulders, and as soon as he notices that, he shoots back inside to get the sack on Zach Wilson. Ultimately, this is a player who understands his athleticism versus a bigger guard and center. And while San Francisco did bring in Leonard Floyd to get to the quarterback, he also showed off great ability and run support. On this play specifically, I love how Leonard Floyd is able to set the edge and then get the running back down for only a 3-yard gain. Once again, here versus the Washington Commanders, Floyd sets the edge, makes sure he doesn't go outside, and then shoots back inside to get the tackle on number 8. And while I love setting edges as much as the next guy, I also love players who are able to understand what's coming before it happens. And here, Floyd sees the gap forming and then gets to the running back for a loss of 2. Moving back to what San Francisco paid for getting to the quarterback, on this play specifically, I love how Leonard Floyd shows off the tools he has in his arsenal. He's able to swim 67 to then get to Tyrod Taylor for the big time sack. Here, you can see how Leonard Floyd utilizes his understanding of angles and momentum to throw this tackle to the ground before getting the sack on Sam Howell. Just another tool he's showing off. And when the quarterback does try to sneak out of the pocket, Floyd has enough awareness to break off of his block to go ahead and chase him down. But don't forget about his athleticism or he'll blow past you like this and then cause your quarterback to fumble. Even when Floyd doesn't get to your quarterback, he often does enough to speed up the decision making and hits your quarterback. My favorite part about Floyd though is how he is able to turn it up on playoff games. Here he gets to the running back instantly almost Almost, he's just so quick off the ball, it's pretty incredible to watch. So while Leonard Floyd is turning 31, his athleticism seems as solid as ever. He gets off the ball quicker than most 21 year olds and then causes your quarterback a whole lot of pain. But maybe what was more impressive to me was how strong Floyd was against the run, something San Francisco will be hoping Floyd can continue. Outside of this one year with the Bills though, Floyd has a long career in the NFL and college, so I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into his career up to this point to understand the type of player he is. Floyd's football career began at Dodge County High School in Eastman, Georgia, where he played tight end as well as defensive end. 24-7 sports had him ranked as a four-star recruit, and he had an offer from University of Georgia, which he accepted. As a true freshman in 2013, Floyd started 8 of 13 games and finished that season with 55 tackles and led the team with 6.5 sacks. 
The following year, Floyd played in 11 games and he finished this year with 55 tackles and 6 sacks. As a junior in 2015, he played in 13 games, had 72 tackles, 4.5 sacks, and 3 passes defended. After this season, Floyd was considered one of the best edge prospects in this entire class, so he decided to enter the 2016 NFL Draft. So with that, scouts decided to dive a lot more deeply into the player Floyd was, and they saw some things they absolutely loved, but one major thing they hated, but starting out with his strengths. Coming in at nearly 6'6 and running his 40-yard dash in 4.6 seconds, Floyd had a unique combination of length and athleticism not really seen in the NFL. In addition to that, he had an extremely deep pass rush toolset, and it just has grown since he's entered the NFL. Scouts also noticed, like I did, if you leave Floyd unblocked, he's going to absolutely ruin whatever play you're going to try to run, whether it be a run or pass. When it was all said and done, scouts saw Leonard Floyd as a consensus top 10 pick, but the biggest question mark would be his size and strength moving forward. The Chicago Bears sitting at number 9 thought it was a great pick in 2016 and selected Floyd. From 2016 to 2019 with the Bears, Leonard Floyd racked in 19 sacks and he proved pretty effective in the run and pass game, also batting down 9 passes. After the 2019 season, Floyd decided to sign with the Rams and this was an excellent choice as he set a season high of 10.5 sacks. And ever since this breakout year, Floyd has never had less than 9 sacks. This was really the year that laid out the blueprint of how to use Leonard Floyd as a pass rusher. During the 2021 season, Floyd had 9.5 sacks, 1 interception, 3 passes defended, and 1 forced fumble. But maybe the most impressive game was the Super Bowl, where he had 5 tackles and 1 sack. In 2022, he had 9 sacks, 59 tackles, and 1 fumble recovery. After this 2022 season, Floyd was released by the Rams, he then signed a contract with the Bills, where he recorded 10.5 sacks last year. Last year, Floyd did have less total tackles though, only having 26, but this was mainly because of the way the Bills decided to use him, not really as an every down rusher, but more as a pass rush specialist. But when he was in there against the run, as I highlighted in this video, I thought he was pretty strong. But now San Francisco has signed Leonard Floyd to a two year deal worth $20 million. So the real question is, how do they plan to use him? I for one expect Leonard Floyd to see more snaps with San Francisco than he did with the Bills. Maybe not a full time starter, but he's definitely going to be in there on a lot more rundowns. My reason for this strong belief is because San Francisco only has really Robert Bill Jr outside of Nick Bosa as their other edge piece. And when you look at the way San Francisco has traditionally used linemen, they've come in bunches. So Robert Bill Jr will see substitutions, but I definitely don't look at Floyd as a liability in the run game and I don't think San Francisco looks at him like that either. So I frankly wouldn't be shocked to see him lining up on first and second down and even Robert Bill Jr coming in on some third downs or perhaps another edge they pick up. But ultimately, these are just some of my thoughts on Leonard Floyd and I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. It would also mean a ton to me if you liked and subscribe and as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.